Well, my thought about the first match was now I understand exactly why MJF made the I'm sure shoot demand that he go on first because this thing was interminable and the people were already, they'd already seen an hour of wrestling when the first match began on the real show with the supposed real stars. And I bet you that Punk was mad that MJF hit Tony up for first before he did, which is why he went second. Because how the f*** would you want to go seventh in this mess? Anyway, did you like MJF's robe? Very nice. On the back, New Japan is an indie. He could, he could have called everybody in that building's mother's whores and not get the heat that he got from saying New Japan Pro Wrestling is a fucking indie. Uh, why does the Japanese ring announcer have weird gray and blue hair with half his head shaved? Is there some epidemic of mange in Japan? Why is everybody's hair so just fucked up? You know, somewhere after Antonio Inoki stopped being involved with New Japan began the bouffant era of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and that's where we are today. Inoki had a hell of a head of hair. Do you think oh, it was yeah. his was Brazilian heritage? Oh, I don't Cause... know. Fujinami had a great head of hair. Well, that's true. Who didn't? I mean, Muto went bald, but so many of the Japanese wrestlers had great heads of hair. Baba, well... Baba was really cursed. That was a bad bald spot. But not anymore with the heads of hair. Now it's all the same. It looks like somebody has fucking thrown a squirrel in there and said, have fun. Um, at least MJF mocked the whole presentation of everything and, and Tanahashi's air guitar, which I guess is a thing, and the way he walks bow-legged, which is obviously a thing. And again, we talked about this on the... What show did we just do? The experience a couple of days ago. That yes, Tanahashi's a legend in Japan, and so people obviously are forgiving because when you see him for the first time over here, or some some person sees him without context, he's like, "What the fuck? Is he injured? Is he broke down? He walks by." Yes, it's from a, a lifetime of becoming a legend in Japanese wrestling, but right now. If you get a legend that can't go anymore, but the people still want to see him, protect him. Don't make him go 20 minutes in singles matches where all the shit that he does, your job guys in your company on free TV every Wednesday do it better and higher and quicker and faster and whatever the fuck. And if the legend can't connect verbally by speaking to people, then that takes that away. So now you've got this guy that you've heard about, you've always wanted to see, and he comes in and he's broken down and he's trying to do the shit that he did how many years ago, and it doesn't work and you don't have any emotional connection to him as a person. You know, I'm not saying every legend has to be in a tag team match. Don't have it go so long. Or... I mean, MJF did the best he could here with what he had to work with, but my God, it was a tribute to him that it, this was as good as it was. He worked as a heel. It wasn't just a collection of meaningless spots. And MJF was using all the tricks, but <clears throat> a ton of, the punches are horrible. He can't get to the top rope, but he kept doing it. He can't get up there, and then he can't stand up there. And the announcers were blaming the difference in the New Japan ring turnbuckles. Yeah, they did try to explain it. Well, yeah, or it could have been gravity. They could have explained it that way. <laughs> he was doing shitty crossbodies off the top rope. And then, I mean, just again, and I'm thinking, where is fucking Nigel? God damn it, who probably knows more about Japanese wrestling than anybody except Kevin Kelly and fucking old sock face there. And MJF would try to, like he hit the shoulder breaker, but he sold his knee too so that it would try to give show him some weakness so that the other guy could legitimately take it. But it, it, their world champion is working with a guy who is not impressive. And unless you're a Japanese wrestling fan you got no idea how he would be, have, have ever become a superstar 
and that's a, that's why I'm saying protect the legends. And if you've got legends that can't speak, imagine if Bullet Bob Armstrong, as in good a shape as he was and the way he could work, couldn't have talked to people, would he have been a tenth as popular? And no, nobody is. So anyway, and that's the thing, if the New Japan Pro Wrestling crossover matches are dream matches, but they're neither as good as the regular AEW matches, nor mean anything going forward in the overall storylines, then whose dream are they? Tony's. And the guys doing them. We're doing some of them. And MJF was probably trying to get the fuck over with this and get out of there without getting hurt. Not to disagree with you, because again, Tanahashi is 46 and broken down. And if he's not broken down, he looks like he's broken down. He doesn't look like the same wrestler he did 10 years ago. And who would? Wrestling that style. And again, 10 years later, knowing that probably a good portion of that crowd, they want to see him. And maybe their only chance to ever see this guy who has been presented as the modern day legend of New Japan pro wrestling. Does that change your thought on how long it should go? Well, no, because you don't want to see the guy. I wouldn't have put him against MJF because there's your world champion. And he's having to really reach down to try to carry this guy that long. If they really want to see Tanahashi, put him against somebody at the next level down that he can fucking go 10 minutes with and do his shit and beat and win. And then they've seen Tanahashi and they cheered for him when he won. And he did his sling blade that they wanted to see where he's basically just crumpled on top of the fucking guy. And I mean, and finally the finish MJF brings the belt in the ring and the referee just takes it away from him. And then Tanahashi gets a schoolboy and a two count. And then MJF pushes him into the referee. And while that's distracted the referee, he punched him with the ring one, two, three. And I wrote, thank God that's over. But I mean, you know, I would have rather seen MJF go 20 minutes with take a shit. Cause I'm, I'm of all of these guys, the only one that I think is worth a shit on his television program, literally going forward is take a shit. And he doesn't have all the bad habits so far that these other guys have that all do the same shit. It's like the W or the Japanese version of WWE. All the new Japan guys do the same shit. Just like all the WWE guys do. You just got to hope he doesn't get the Rachel haircut from friends like the rest of the new Japan crew. No, I think he needs to stay exactly as he is. They got something there, but, but he's a heel. So MJF, you wouldn't want to book and he's around. So you wouldn't want to book MJF versus him. If you well, were going to no. use MJF on the show, but they were going to use it. They were going to use, uh, they did use take as a baby face. They could have got that. in. I'm just saying as a, as a Japanese talent, <laughs> The poor guy that's supposed to be getting a push because he was just an underneath guy and nobody gave a shit about take a shit. He's better than Tanahashi and Takahashi and Okada and Omega and Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. Key Largo, Montego. Baby, where did we go wrong with this show? You just changed the lyrics, but... Yeah, a- all right. Underrated song, people... Say bad things about it. So anyway, uh, continuing uh, the final thoughts on MJF's match with this fucking guy. Uh, I would rather talk about Kokomo. <laughs> no, I thought it was um, better than I expected after seeing the Swerve Strickland match with Tanahashi on Collision, which was taped. I, mean, I don't know if that was just as is or if it was edited, but it well, wasn't. It, no, it was MJF instead of Swerve, and it was... MJF instead of Swerve. Yeah, and MJF works a smart match. And, you know, even though he's the AEW world champion, it was the right move having him start off the show because he wasn't going to... He wasn't going to go out there and do stupid stuff to outdo the guys that were going to do stupid stuff to outdo each other. So this is the perfect place for him. And I actually thought the one-two punch on this show worked well. Despite, yes. Despite the uh, length of the match. The two biggest stars in the company got on first and second on the pay-per-view or 
fifth and sixth if you were actually in the arena, and then they got the fuck out of there before they got any on them. 